Hello and welcome to the Alpha Movement Podcast. My name is Tom Foxley and on today's show I am joined by Daniel Frazier. Now we speak about all things strongman, we think we speak about all things coffee and anyone who knows me will know that I love my coffee. So we get really into the nitty gritty of how to make a perfect cup and why instant coffee is basically shit and we, <laughs> we really kind of get into the weeds and then we also speak about Dan's transition to strongman, how he's phenomenal or a phenomenal athlete how he is crushing the strongman scene and we get some great training advice too so if you're a coffee lover if you're a strongman athlete or just an athlete who wants to find out a bit more about coffee or strongman this is the show for you don't forget you can head to alphamovement.co um, to find out more about the alpha movement or you can head to patreon.com slash alpha movement podcast if you want to support the show for as little or as much as you would like and you can head to social media reach out to either daniel or myself and congratulate us on what i think is a great episode and most importantly if you want to get a discount, a 15% discount on all of um, Dan's stuff at Barbell and Beans, you can head to barbell and be- barbellsandbeans.bigcartel.com and you can enter the discount code ALPHA15, A-L-P-H-A-1-5, and you can get 15% off. Now, let's get on with the show because that's enough of me rambling. So, Dan, welcome to the show, man. Um, it's a real pleasure to have you on, and hopefully we can talk about some coffee and some gains and uh, all that kind of fun stuff. How are you doing today? Yeah, really good, man. Uh, just sort of uh, winding up for Christmas. Uh, my wife and I sort of live down south, so we're going to drive back down. Uh, where is it? Friday next week. So we're just trying to get everything ready together, and I've got a baby on the way as well. So just uh, you know, Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very That's much. Nice. Yeah. Getting all the house ready and uh, getting ready for Christmas. Yeah. Good stuff. So I'm going to start with the, um, the important question. Why should people care about good coffee? Oh, why, why not? Have you tasted instant coffee? I mean, come on, man. It's, just, it's horrific. So, I mean... <laughs> coffee is i think for me it goes beyond a drink uh, it's like a real big passion of mine um, i'm obsessed with it really i think when you've had when you finally have that what happened with me is i had that one good cup of coffee where suddenly you drink it whether it was that latte with a bit of arse on it or you taste the coffee like this doesn't taste like burnt crap and something that opens you up like oh my god why why is this so good and then the barista starts telling you why and then you get a little bit into it and then you find out you know it's almost like wine like there's so many different varietals uh beans uh ways it's grown where it's grown in the world uh the way it's processed uh, how you make it and it just becomes like a hobby you know it just becomes like um a passion like much the same as training for me coffee's the same i'm always wanting to learn more and get into it and then of course it's this great drink for the you know full of antioxidants and all this kind of stuff and caffeine and it's really tasty and it, you know it can sit in quite well with a healthy lifestyle so i absolutely love it yeah, cool. Can you talk a bit about the uh, the kind of the health benefit side of it? Yeah, well, just that you know, and is you know, it got the antioxidants. Uh, it's you know, it's, if you're tracking macros, it's got I think one calorie in it, maybe zero calories. Nice. Uh, I think it's, if it's like anything, if you have too much, yeah, it can, it's not the best for you, but it, it can sit perfectly healthily in within with for most people's diets, and you know, I think it's pretty. I'd like to think well known caffeine alongside training it just, it, it just works uh, it gives you a bit of a boost it makes you feel good and you can train a little bit harder for a little bit longer I mean it's like anything else if you, if you have too much uh, the, the effects go down whereas if you sort of just have to stick with that one to two cups which is hard so trust me I know I've got people manage a cafe and there was quite a lot of coffee going on there but um it's just a couple of cups. It just has this amazing effect on your training and you don't have to spend, you know, break the bank on all these expensive fancy supplements, which you have, which have no research behind it. You don't know what's going on. Uh, and you can just have a good old cup of coffee. You know, you, you can stick to your cheaper ones, which are you know, not the best tasting in my opinion, but uh, then you can get, you know, some premium, excellent coffees. And for what you're paying for the premium side of coffees, it's the equivalent of getting that, you know, 60 70 pound bottle of whiskey you're getting the best coffees from around the world from places where it's just sustainably grown and everyone's getting a fair wage and you can drink some of the best stuff going how would you recommend getting started in coffee because I, I get this quite a lot of people see that i'm an avid coffee drinker and like i've got my uh, my b60 and all those kind of things and kind of like my little um my little like my uh what's, what's the right way just i get different bags from all around the world from different companies and all that kind of stuff what's a good way to get started in the coffee world a uh, good way to get started is obviously log on to Barbells and Beans and have a look at that. But uh, good place is um, look, out, look, look out for your local, if you're in a sort of a bigger city or a bigger town, speciality coffee um, 
uh, provider. Uh, the best place I, I started off in um, in Newcastle, so we're quite lucky. We've got a lot of shops around here with some fantastic coffee and you know the, the best machines and talented baristas. So it's trying to find your local independent where they really care. You know, look for it if you go in there if they offer a pour over, so like a V60 or something like that, and just a place where they really take care and they can explain the coffee to you, where it's from, how it's made, how they recommend it best, and then if you're looking to buy. You know, there's plenty of websites online with fantastic coffees, and you know, my 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 company has some good coffee. Just got to you know keep it freshly roasted. Um, basically, it's kind of like supermarket coffee doesn't tend. It's not the best it can be uh, in terms of uh, the coffees that I like. You know, I'm looking for when's it roasted, uh, how's it made. The, basically, the more information you can get behind the coffee generally means the better it's going to be instead of just your standard uh, dark roast, medium roast. Yeah, have this great. You want to know the farm where it's from basically the more background you can get the better okay can you talk about about the uh the roasting process and how that affects the flavor yeah so roasting is where you bring out all the goodness in the beans so the, the way i had it described to me was uh, imagine getting a piece of steak uh it's how you roast it is going to be how it's going to taste so with my with my company it's i buying the best beans going uh, well, I like to think they're best piece going. You know, they're probably a little bit more pricey to buy, so they're, they're graded on a a scale, and uh, the score that my beans get puts them in that speciality bracket. So the really good sort of coffee beans. So that's all good and well, but unless it's roasted properly, uh, effectively and well, you you can still have a crap taste of coffee. Like you can burn it, you can not roast it well. You, there's so many things that can go on. I mean, the, the roasting process is something I'm really still interested in learning. But, uh, so you're getting a, basically you're, you're roasting it. It's as simple as that. You're roasting the bean. You're turning it from a green, a raw product into something which you can consume. So through roasting it, you're going to bring out unlock all those flavors. So it's in the roaster's hand uh, to bring out the best from the coffee. So you could you could have the same bean, send it out to different coffee roasters, different machines, different temperatures, different places in the country, uh, and it's how they roast it is what's going to bring out the best. And you could have almost three completely different tasting coffees, depending on how it's been roasted. Okay. How does how does the uh, does the flavor profile generally change depending on like roast time and heat and that kind of stuff? So, you know, broadly speaking, you're going to try and roast the coffee the best for that coffee. So what you would do is you'd have a test roast. Uh, you find out how it is, if it's, if it's any good. You test it. You're looking for certain qualities in it. Um, so it's called a cupping. You might have seen guys with their spoons, like, sipping the coffee and taking notes and really thinking about it. But roasting, it's normally the darker you go, the more you're going to push towards that sort of um, what you might be tasting in a lot of shops. So, you know, these oily sort of dark beans, it's really, it can be quite bitter, almost a bit nasty. Um, There's not much flavor. It's just that harsh bitterness coffee taste. So to some places, some places have roasteries, have their coffee like that. But I mean, that's all well and good. But where I feel those roasteries are missing out is you're not, unlocking that flavor so same if you had that if we go back to the steak you have that amazing steak if you're putting it charring it well super well done then you're ruining it you're not getting the best out of it and the same if you go too light so you just throw it in and take it out you could be missing out on the development stage of all these beautiful flavors so it's trying to find the right roast um i like to with our roast it, it, it's a little bit uh, it's, it's light to dark so i say medium but we kind of roast to make it so it comes out really nicely through espresso machines and filter mm-hmm. and to really give it, you know, a little bit of a kick, but still that, you know, really nice. I want you to taste the coffee, not just drink our coffee. Yeah. I want you to, you know, really think about the flavors that you have. And that is the essential difference between uh, a coffee that you'd get from buying your beans and going to Starbucks, for example. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if you're coming, I mean, Starbucks is, you know, a huge, huge, big business and it's almost done to cost their, their roasters. Uh, I mean, I always uh, liken it to, I don't know if you'd like beer at all, craft beer, it's the same sort of thing. Mm. You've got huge, huge um, breweries, which it, at sometimes great. You know, if you, if a Starbucks is in, you need to grab a coffee quick, there it is. Go for it. Yeah. Fantastic. But I mean, if you have the opportunity to visit these, um, sort of like use a smaller roaster, or, um, a local coffee shop, you've just got so much more, connection to that cup um it just it, t- it i think it tastes much much better as well and for about the same price if i think sometimes it's actually a bit cheaper you're getting the best of what it can be instead of you know mass produced stuff which isn't you know i don't think is it doesn't come anywhere near to what is available yes yeah, it's, it's almost like you're um you're comparing cost per milligram of caffeine to cost per enjoyment um, and you can like if for example my girlfriend like hated coffee for a long time um, and then 
I got, I stopped getting chip beans and started getting some decent beans. It was like, oh, I can taste chocolate in this and I can taste fruit in this. And oh, there you go. It's that, that, it's that cup you have and you're like, oh my God. It's almost like, have you ever seen that Pulp Fiction? Yes. Yeah. You know when they have, they have the coffee with the Quentin Tarantino scene and they just stop for a moment like, what is this? It's like, I, I buy the more gourmet shit. Like, <laughs> I don't buy that crap. Um, yeah. Same sort of thing. It's like, I'm now the coffee guy. Like, I'll buy, I'll buy the gourmet shit. <laughs> Quite a lot of it, actually, you know. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it, the difference is night and day. I mean, I'm not a wine, big wine drinker myself, but you've, you know, we all know a few mates who are like, oh, I didn't drink this wine. Oh, I can't drink a bottle. That's terrible. It's, it's the same sort of thing with coffee. And you know what? Well, you know a... Uh, a crap whiskey to a good whiskey. So it's, it's similar sort of things, yeah. Yeah, um, I've got a cupboard just up there, and it's uh, it's full of different beans and uh, and different techniques to use it. So can you go over the different techniques we could use to get a great cup of coffee? Uh, first and foremost, my biggest recommendation to people would be to buy a grinder, uh, a coffee grinder, preferably a burr grinder if you can. Um, the difference between fresh coffee to ground coffee is night and day. Um, when you grind a bean, what happens is you're getting all that oxygen to it straight away. So the best way to think of it is if you have an apple, you cut your apple in half. How long does it take for the skin to go brown? You know, very, very quickly. The same thing's happening, happening to the coffee. So it's going stale pretty quickly. And that's uh, you're losing all that fantastic flavor. So you want to keep that in as much as you can. So first bit of advice I would say to people is, you know, get, an amazing, get, a, good, get a grinder, buy whole bean, freshly roasted coffee. Uh, and then things like, you know, every house has a cafetiere knocking around somewhere if they don't you know they're like three five pounds from the supermarket and you can make fantastic coffee um, in a cafetiere so a, a good way for that would be uh you know a couple of tablespoons uh, I, I like to get quite specific with my numbers so i go for my cafetiere i think 75 grams per liter and then i leave it for a brew time a coarse grind nice brew time um i leave it for about three to four minutes with a cafetiere and then I, I wait for it to settle down and then enjoy myself a really nice cup of coffee. There's all these fantastic things now you can buy at home to create amazing coffee as well. You know, you've you mentioned the V60. Yeah. Fantastic um, bit of kit. Uh, the reason I like the V60 uh, is it's because it's, uh, it's, 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 this is where coffee gets more than just the, the bean. It's, it's, come on, I bet you love making it as well. It's a routine. It's You know what it's like before um, clients in the morning or before when I start work, it's, you know, for that food tips to go in and it creates a really nice, um, like clean, uh, super lovely cup of coffee, like really filtered, really nice. Uh, things like aero presses uh, mm-hmm. have done really, really well in the um, the home market. Just uh, the, these, it's made by the guy that made that disc, and uh, they're just fantastic ways, almost foolproof ways to make amazing coffee at home. I always recommend them if anyone's asking me what should I get and they want to get something good. I always go, hey, get yourself an aero press. You've got the best of both worlds. You've got that full immersion, which you can get in a cafeteria, as in all the beans are getting soaked and. And then you get the filtration as well because you're plunging it down, which you get from the V60. So it creates a really, really nice cup of coffee. Yeah. So for the for the guys that haven't seen Neropress, um, can you describe what it is? Uh, without being crude, it looks like some kind of penis enlarger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like a, the best way to describe it. Know. A big, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, It's like a big syringe. Uh, It's a tube, uh, and it's got this bit on the end. You sort of plunge down, uh, so like a big syringe sort of style, but. Uh, yeah, if you just if you can just Google it, you can see it straight away. It's like a plun- a plunger, I guess, is the most. Yeah. Have you ever played around with roasting your own beans? Um, not yet. The way what happens with my company is I have in contact with some people who are phenomenal coffee roasters. So what I do is I buy the green beans in myself. Uh, I you know I visit the, the roastery regularly, so I buy in the green beans. I then tell them what profile I would like, and then they they roast it for me. Okay. So I'm buying it. I'm always buying in the coffee. I'm in regular contact with the roasters it's not to my specification but at the moment i'm leaving you know they're super talented guys so i'm like you know you guys do this so you, you go for it and then um you know hope maybe one day i'll, I'll transition into roasting myself because it is quite exciting yeah right but uh you know it, I, they're too too precious those beans to muck up myself so I <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, i mean it's all stuff that i buy in into my specifications so you know I'm, i like to be quite hands-on but you know that they they create these amazing tasting things yeah, there's a couple of places I've been. Uh, one of them, Hot Numbers in Cambridge, and that's amazing um, because it's such a technical approach mm-hmm. to, to roasting. Um, like you see them with all their laptops in there and graphs. It's like, Holy shit! Oh, this, this is it. They've got the, they're tracking like like you. Uh, I, I don't know if some of your listeners do this. You track your macros, you track your volume in training. You, um, you the more data you can get, the better. You can look out for anomalies where things have worked, where things haven't worked. It's exactly the same with the roasting process. And um, I like to think I like to you know I trust these guys 
you know, the good friends of mine actually, like I really trust them to get the best out of it and it creates an amazing product and the way it's working out is it's, you know, I'm still bringing, you know, a fantastic product to, you know, the fitness sort of marketplace and it's, it's going well, yeah. But uh, I do, uh, I'll leave all the, the tracking and things to my training and everyone else's training. <laughs> so where does the, the idea of coffee and caffeine come into play in terms of training? It's kind of, you know, basically you've got, in terms of supplements, what actually work and what doesn't work, yeah. it, it, you know, from the top of my head, uh, you know, everyone knows the benefits of high protein diets, you know, good quality protein, you know, with leucine, all that kind of uh, important things. And then um, creatine, you know, that's pretty well researched. Uh, it works. It's good. And then from there, it's kind of this, oh, well, this might work. It's been shown in some studies to work. Yeah, we think this works. And it's a bit of a minefield. But then caffeine seems to be this uh, property which keeps coming up again of positive, positive. You know, you can go on examine.com and look up all the benefits of caffeine with training. Yeah. Um, it just keeps popping up all the time. Uh, so I was like, well, hey, you know, from my point, I'm hugely passionate about coffee anyway. I loved it. And then when I was playing, I do um, strongman competitions and I used to play rugby professionally. And of course, we're drug tested. So we're like, where can we get these? Um, what can we use? What can we take? And it was always caffeine, you know, things loaded with caffeine, like your energy drinks and all this kind of stuff. And frankly, they taste a bit like crap and they're full of all these, I don't know what's in them and all these other things. But I was like, well, coffee and, you know, training, they seem to go pretty good, you know, hand in hand. You can have a you can get this amazing cup of coffee, which for me tastes fantastic and is chock full of caffeine and good stuff and have that before you training and you just, you just crack on. So I just found when I was drinking coffee and I was training, it just had this really nice pairing. I just felt I could just go a little bit longer and, you know, felt like a little bit, it's a little bit more focused. And then when you see that come up in research as well, it's hugely motivating. So mm-hmm. for me, it's, it's also the lifestyle side of things. I'm just, you know, caffeine junkie. So I just love it. Yeah. I love this. Um, you're like, you're, I think it's similar to you, Tom, that you just, the taste, uh, the places it comes from. Uh, it's just fantastic. So I wanted to bring, marry the two together and I've, I've done the same. Yeah. Something I missed out on, does um, geography really influence the flavor massively yeah massively uh best way you could do it is get yourself a brazilian bean and get yourself a bean from kenya side to side and just see the difference it's crazy how different they are uh, i use quite a lot of brazilian beans because they create a they're really nice base bean and they've got this lovely chocolatey sort of hazelnutty flavors which you know for a tip you know if you're going straight into coffee uh the good good coffee it's a great place to start because you know they're, they're really flavorful they go great for espresso great for your like your flat whites and things like that but then on the flip side you've got things like your ethiopian natural beans and you've got your kenyan uh, washed uh, beans and they just are amazing it's like right bean and cherries um berries uh, these crazy flavors i've had peach uh, i've had um plum all these delicious delicious flavors you, you never ever think to be associated with coffee and then suddenly you're like wow what is this and then they you know when the roaster tells you or the, the barista tells you hey this is our ethiopian natural from this little farm out in ethiopia incredible and you're just like oh wow like, i need some more of that i need to learn more about this region and the way coffee works is that this is why my coffees will never be the same or they'll always continually change because it's uh, the seasons change different coffees come you know, become available and then at certain times in the years it's the, the guatemalans at certain times of the year the kenyans are coming out so you get really excited for all these new released coffees so the idea is, is as soon as i've run out of a bag of coffee i'll try and get another one in of something else just so people keep tasting so so far i've had coffees from uh, the congo i've had coffees from uh, tanzania i've had coffees two from brazil now and i've got one from guatemala so i'm just trying to introduce everyone to all these amazing flavors so yeah absolutely geography really really changes uh, the taste of the coffee nice nice what is the um the most underestimated aspect of coffee underestimated um i think it's funny when you when you ask that because it's it, i think people hear that and just go oh it's just coffee man how oh, wait come on you put it in a cup stir it and it's ready i, I think it's the i think it's more from our side of things to educate to um, deliver a really high quality product. So before you even get the bean as a consumer at home, um, has the good coffee been grown sustainably? Uh, I think that's quite important. Have the farmers and the workers been paid, you know, a fair wage? Then it's not slave labor <laughs> because it, it can happen. Um, is that taken care of? Has it been, uh, when it's imported, the green beans, is it being roasted properly uh, using a good roaster? Um, then from there, is it packaged? Is it kept correctly? Is it roasted freshly before it even gets to you? Have all those boxes been ticked? And then it's, 
are you going to make it well at home? So I think, you know, things like grinders are so important. So I think in terms of people, they, uh, I don't know if you can underestimate it, but just know that all of these steps have been taken in place for you to get your coffee before you've even taken a sip. So that's the difference between, you know, your, your sort of your Nest Cafes to your really high quality speciality coffee. So I think it's, yeah. Nice. And then to take a complete left turn, mm-hmm. what's your training like at the moment? You're obviously strongman training. Um, is it powerlifting based or is it very varied? At the moment, I'm in a bit of a, uh, what do you say, almost an off season. So this year, this was my first competitive year in strongman. So I've done one competition before that, but this is my first hard year. So it involved British Strongest Man uh, for the Naturals, uh, uh, 105 which is my category so I did a qualifier I did Britain's I did Newcastle's I did World's Strongest Man and then so I did a right I came third came fifth of Worlds after a bit of a fuck up but uh, hopefully next year I'll get that sorted out uh, so now for me it's more building strength you know really building strength I'm quite I'm quite capable with the the more sort of athletic things like your running around, your loadings, your medleys. I think that that's probably from my rugby background like I'm quite capable with that kind of things whereas for me I think you know, if you're stronger at, you know, pressing things and pulling things off the floor and you, if your legs are strong, it's only going to make you a better athlete, I think, like uh, building that base. So for the last few months, I've just been on, you know, I wouldn't say a rampage, but just really smashing heavy training very frequently as much as my body can tolerate. So I've gone from deadlifting once a week, sometimes three times a week. I mean, at the moment, I'm sticking around twice. I'm going to retest again. But, you know, from, from really pushing hard, you know, I've managed to put on, you know, 30 to 40 kilos on my last personal best just from really, you know, concentrated hard training. I do a lot of technical work as well, a lot of checking back on my sets, my videos, what's going on there. So for me, it's it, uh, basically I, I do I do barbells and beans and I personal train as well. So I'm kind of, as you can imagine, all over the place. So for me, <laughs> my training is if and when I can get it in. So it's these kind of frequent sessions, but it can sometimes only maybe even be one lift, but just hammer that one lift, you know four sets of five on a deadlift can be very hard if you load it properly. Mm-hmm. So just smashing through that and then just trying to know when to push, when to pull back. I mean, I went to a seminar with Mike share a few weeks ago and I'm trying to implement some of that RPE style training, which is, uh, it's, just it, it's it's okay, but it's it's difficult to really emotionally separate yourself from. Okay, could I do two more? Not I want to do two more. Yeah. But I actually do two more at an eight RPE, and it, it's difficult there. But I think the big thing I learned from here from him was you can tolerate a lot more than what you think you can. So at the moment, I'm probably pulling probably eight or about 90% of my max uh, every week, sometimes twice a week, which is uh, I, for my style of what I used to do with my programming, unheard of. So it's kind of nice to think, oh, okay, well, I can pull this after I've squatted the day before, like a deadlift. I can now deadlift after that and still pull decent weights. So for me, it's just knowing your body can handle a lot more volume than what you think. And you need to listen to yourself as well and a nice frequency of lifts. Like I like to do the same you know, squat bench. Uh, not, not so much bench now because of the strength, although I've just signed up for power left me so I have to bench it now. but just really making sure for me it's cover the basics first if I've got more time I'll throw in some event stuff uh, I'll throw in some you know some curls all that kind of stuff but as I get closer to competition that's when it really starts getting specialized so the further out you are from comp or your goal of whatever that is you can do whatever you kind of want as long as it's fairly in line as you get closer towards that competition it then almost becomes exclusively the events I'm training for or whatever you're goals are you really just start to hone that in and then you sort of test it hopefully you make some improvements and then you start the whole process again now i saw you hit a like technically well, from my, my point of view technically perfect deadlift the other day uh, was it 250 for one it was, 250, yeah, 250, yeah. yes it's, it's nice to see like someone taking that skill-based approach and really go like yeah i'm going to move really well as opposed to just going i'm going to pick up a really fucking heavy thing I think where people go wrong, and this is where I sometimes bash my head against as a coach as well, because um, I sort of coach a few athletes, is what's the, what is the purpose of technique? And I, I think most people's thoughts would be, oh, well, injury prevention, injury prevention. It's like, no, what is the purpose of technique in terms of lifting a weight? And you're like, think about it. It's, like, it's to lift the most amount of weight possible. Mm. And then when you think of it that way, so I get, we'll have a lifter who goes, ah, oh, we all see them on Facebook and we all see the shit personal trainers putting these videos up as well. Oh, they lifted a max. Yeah, it looks ugly, but hey, it's a, it's a new max. Fantastic. And it's like, think about it. Is that new max actually a max if there was a technical breakdown? Yeah. I mean, really think about it. Probably not. 
No. Say, say your hips shot back a little bit, your knees caved in slightly, uh, you lost tightness in your upper back. That's all telling me, little flags. It's like you probably could have lifted it e- either better or you could have lifted more weight. And you know, yeah. like when you tell athletes that way, they're like, oh, what do you mean? I was like, you could lift more weight if you don't know how to lift properly. And they're like, oh, but that's how it is. It's like, no, no, we strip you back and build you back up. I mean, I've done some help with my friend on his deadlift and, you know, and Sonny, you know, it's like Sonny 30, 40 kilos are shooting up just because they're learning how to get their hips in position. And it, yeah. normally if it looks pretty, it means it's good. It's doing what you need it to do. And for what I've, what I've had to do, I mean, from my, a bit of my backstory, I have, I've had back surgery. I've had a rugby career, which had to end because of a disc injury. So I, at one point I couldn't lift weights for like a year or so. I couldn't even tie my shoelaces because it was too painful. So from what I've learned from that as well, if you're doing bad movements, bad technique all the time, how can you expect your body to be all right under heavy loads? Uh, how can you expect it to move well under heavy loads? You can't. We all know volume. Another another point. We all know volume is really important to getting big and strong. You know, it's pretty well documented now. How are you going to achieve high levels of volume if you don't have good technique? You'll break down. Something's going to go. I remember a few years ago, I'd, I'd start these high frequency. I, I used to think high frequency like deadlift and squatting was ridiculous. I was like, your body can't handle that's rubbish, absolutely crap. Because every time I tried it, I broke down. It's because I was lifting like shit. You then reevaluate, learn how to do it, and suddenly you're like, hang on, I'm squatting three times a week and I'm not even thinking about it. There's my you know, my back is if if I get slightly out of position with my back, I'm I'm done. That's me out for quite a while and I have to be so anal about it. But I think the, especially with deadlift, when you feel that point where you actually use your hips properly, when suddenly you feel tight on the bottom and you get a lifter sort of um I can't really show you here, but that, that, that sort of hips coming down and suddenly the weight pops off the floor, suddenly you see with their eyes, they go Oh, so that's how it's meant to feel. It's like, oh, that doesn't hurt. Yeah. So I'm, obs- I'm obsessed with positioning, technique, all, that, all those kind of things. Because I, you know, I'm not blessed with being one of these. I like, oh, just left it up and all that. You know, some of my, a lot of my games have come from. I have to learn how to do this, and a lot of that is from my rugby background. You know, the scrummaging. If you don't scrummage correctly, doing that, you get your head shut up your ass. So you have to learn how to be perfect. So I've, I've taken that into my training as well. And um, I just, I just can't stand seeing crap lifts. So I don't want to do it myself. And I know when I lift well and I get things, everything's in position. I now know if I fail a lift, it's because it, a I'm not strong enough or it just wasn't there. Because I'm pretty confident with my technique that I don't think it's a technical failure. It might be sometimes, but very rarely. We, mm-hmm. That's one thing I can iron out straight away. I mean, you must get it as a coach with your clients. You see that you failed that because this happened. Next week they try it, oh, fine. So I can take that variable out and then just focus on, you know, lifting. Like for me, I don't, I don't think about position now when I lift because, you know, I've trained since it's I was. ingrained, yeah. I've trained, God, like, what was it? I think, I think 13, 14 years now, just training all the time since yeah. I was 15, I started. I mean, we're not talking about serious when you're 15, but I've started 15 mm-hmm. at least once a week, every week, and then twice, and then you move on from there. So I like to think I should have some idea of what I'm doing. But then... Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just, this got to be good, A, for your health, B, to lift the most weight, and then yeah. C, you get big and strong, do you want to toggle that muscle? Say if you want to build your quads and you're squatting with your hips shooting back, you're never going to develop those quads like you should do if you're not loading them up properly. So. Exactly. You're just bleeding athletic potential, aren't you, at that oh, point? The nail on the head there, yeah. Just, See it just everything. seeping out of people. <laughs> You'll only have gains with, it, with an S, not with a Z. I mean, you can't have yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, God, last question. Oh, sorry, uh, what, got you into, um, what got you into strongman training? Well, all right. I got into strongman uh, because uh, post-rugby, uh, I needed something else. <laughs> uh, I need something to do. to look. I can't. I, I respect people that do, but I can't train to train. I have to train for something, whether that's a, a, a physique goal, a strength goal. But for me, it's all about competition. I love com- putting myself into competition. Sometimes I... You'll see my face. I don't look like I'm enjoying it, but I have to do that competition. Uh, you know, another point. I had a bit of, not 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 trying. He's a good friend of mine, but having some uh, some chat on Facebook about you know squat depth and things like that. So I was like straight away. Uh, all right, that's it. So I'm now booked in to do my uh, first official powerlifting meet in uh, January, just because nice. I had a conversation about squat depth. So I was like, right, I'll do that one then. So I, I just like competing. I like doing things. So strongman happen up here. It's in the Northeast. It's really starting to kick forward this uh, strongman sport, which is great because um, 
it's a fantastic sport and it gives gives you so much and there's so much to it you have to work really hard and it's, mm. it's fantastic so up here there was a, a local competition uh, it was a first timer competition and I saw it pop up on Facebook with these adverts you see it was a local gym uh, and I thought um uh, all right, I'll give it a go. I'll, I'll give it a go. Why not? You know, I do all this training. Hey, this, this, this have, it's time to do something with it. Signed up. Uh, I was on the reserve list because so many people signed up. So I wasn't even doing the meet. So I was like, okay, I'm in the background just in case. And then it came to the week before the event and they're like, someone's dropped out of sickness. Do you want to do it? And I was like, God, uh, I haven't really trained for this. And I was like, do you know what? Too many people go, oh, no, no, I'm not going to do it. And I was like, screw this. I'm going for it. So I went for it. And first event, yeah, went okay. But then suddenly, I think I won most of the events in it and did really, really quite well. So I was like, God, this is pretty good fun. He's like, I absolutely smashed it. And I was like, this is brilliant. So I did that. And I was like, I've got a taste for it. Yeah, this was good. This was good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've got a bit of a taste for it. But, uh, you know, we'll see. You know, strongmen's full of these big, big guys, you know, really heavy, you know, the ones you see on TV. And I was like, you know, I just lost about 20 kilos of body fat from when I finished playing rugby. So I was like, I don't really want to get this big, big guy again. So I was like, oh, we'll see how we go. So then, oh, there's a there's Newcastle novices coming up in my gym in FSI. So I was like, all right, we'll give that a go. But it's just a novice comp, you know, mm. nothing big there. Did it. I think I, well, I was first place from the start all the way to the end. So I was like, that would be a pretty good comp. So I was like, well, this is really, really cool. Oh, this is fantastic. Yeah, I won this. All right, well, what can I do next? Open competitions? No, nah, I can't do opens there. You know, huge, huge monster guys. You know, I've got friends who are like, they laugh at me for being small at 110 kilos. I'm the small one. And these guys are like 150 plus kilos. And a good friend of mine is 135 kilos lean. And you're just like, Jesus, these guys are monsters. So I was like, no, nah, I can't do that. So I won that. And then I left Strongman for a little bit. Um, just cracked on, did, did what I did. But then got, got an injury in my back, flared up a little bit again. So then I thought, I can't do this anymore. It's, it's too hard. Strongman stuff for me. And then... It happened again. Another competition landed on my doorstep. But what I didn't realize is this: there's this whole, um, for guys who don't choose to do steroids, you know, if you want to take steroids, okay, that's, that, that's up to you. That's fine, cool. But it's nice to have, there are federations like the, uh, like the IPF in Strongman, uh, the BNSF, where you're, you're tested, you're drug tested. So I was like, you know, for me, for my lifestyle right now, that suits me really well. So I was like, okay, well, this is cool. But then also I found out you have weight categories. I was like, oh, okay. So you don't have to be this monster. So for me, it was the 105 kilo weight class. I was like, I'm pretty much there. So I was like, okay, this is starting to get more interesting. Saw the weights for the comp and I was like, no way, can't lift any of those. No, 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 I can't do that. But then it was at my gym and not, not many people signed up. And I was like, I'll be kicking myself if I don't enter this. And this was the Britons. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a go. We'll see what happens. Uh, completely bombed out of the first event. Couldn't lift it. I was like, oh God, here we go. But then kind of for some reason just fluked hung on in that competition um i just was like oh this is how yeah i'm getting all right and then it came to the stones the you know the things yeah. and i managed to do quite well in that and because i smashed that event i managed to qualify for britain so i've gone from i sort of fell into this comp as well i signed it signed up for it two weeks beforehand and i'd never lifted some of the weights before some of them i couldn't even lift and then suddenly i'm like okay well i've just qualified for britain so this is pretty cool and then i came out of that competition sort of knowing well, let's have a think about this. Uh, two weeks preparation, just come off a back injury, maybe sort of got my way into it. And I was like, well, no, this isn't too bad, this. Uh, this is pretty, this is all right. So I saw the events for Britons and I thought, I was quietly sort of confident. I was like, I'll be seen as almost this outsider guy in his first year. And I was like, I think I can do okay. So I turned up, um, got the first event, great. And then it just kind of managed with strongman, you have to be consistent almost like a CrossFit competition. As long as you're consistent all the way through, you will place quite well. Yeah. I was managing to stay top three, top five for pretty much every event. You know, I'm a bit on all round as my kind of game. I'm not a big person, I'm not a monster deadlifter. It's just kind of the all round sort of things. So I've gone from uh, sort of stumbling into it to now being quite competitive. And then I ended up, you know, scoring a solid third place, uh, Britain's. So I was like, that's pretty cool. You know, I've come third in Britain in my first year. So I've got to you know, show you here my little, this is what you win. Little dagger. So I've got, oh, cool. So I was like, look at, look at me and my dagger. The, the winner's got an axe, so I won that next time. <laughs> but, uh, you, you, you get, you know, I was like, I won that. And I was like, fuck, and I, I've just qualified for the natural world strongest man now. And I was like, that's pretty cool. So, really cool. so yeah, I qualified for that and then I trained really hard for that. Um, went out there, there's, um, got to pull a truck, got to oh. pull a truck, big okay. yoke runs, log pressing, like some really Conan's, all, like power stairs things I've never done. It was, it was just fantastic. And, um, I had one little 
screw up on an event which kind of, which was an event I should have won really. Mm. Uh, I screwed up on that, but on the day the guys were really com- they're really really strong like competitive guys. And I screwed up on that, so that go- in strongman you, if you screw up one event it can drop you right down your placing. So I had that bit of a muck up, but you know I still came away thinking you know the fifth in the world that's not bad in my first year. So now I've got now <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now I'm like okay, well. I'm not quite keen for this now. So now I've signed up for England's strongest 105, the Northern Qualifier, uh, March next year. So that will be my biggest comp I've done. That will be with all the, all the guys, not just the um, the BNSF guys. So that'll be that'll be hard, like some yeah. strong dudes in that category. So it'd be interesting to see where I stack up. So instead of in my first year looking at the events of competitions and going, oh, I'm not sure about this. I don't think I can do. It. I'm now. You know, from training, you know, correctly planned training and pushing myself is now to the point where I'm like, okay, well, I think I'll be good at this. I have a shot at that. I'm now more, you know, got a good idea. And I think for me, it's sort of, it's like when you start training, you're like, you've got the bar or you've got 60, 50 kilos or whatever. And you're like, oh, I'm never going to get good at this. This is all, Mm. this is terrible. I'm never going to get better. And then suddenly you find yourself a year down the line and you're like, have I really just, you know, lifted this? Or is it like when you hit a new personal best, you're like, Wow, you know, I've, I've done so much more. You see, you see these physique changes happening. It's that journey down the road. So now, for me, that journey down the road is 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 the strongman journey. So it's it's fantastic to be progressing in that. And by having that goal, that that um, uh, the target for me, it's now means my training is always going up a notch. I've always got a purpose to why I train, why I want to get a better, why I want to get better. So it's uh, it's been cool, yeah. So I'm looking forward to a big year in Strongman alongside being a father, and I'm really excited about next year. Sweet. And it sounds like uh, 2017 is going to be a good year for you. Yes, hopefully. Look, everyone drinking coffee, wearing great <laughs> apparel, uh, everyone getting more into strong, more into strength sports. What I'd like to see more from everyone in the community is more people competing. I would love to see more of that instead of uh, lifting and getting, oh, I don't want to. I think just sign up for one whatever it is if it's a bodybuilding show if it's a crossfit competition if it's you know even if it's like a a a tough mudder do something you'll get so much out of it and your training will go up a huge notch leading into that whatever it is if you feel you're not ready don't worry about that Uh, i was not ready for my competitions at all i completely stumbled into a couple of well the first two were okay but the last one absolutely stumbled into it so you never know what you're going to do on the day um you never know where it can take you so I, i think my biggest advice is get a competition lined up, nothing lights a fire up your ass like getting ready for a comp. Yeah. I thought you were going to say what I'd like to see more of is people pulling trucks, sipping an espresso. Oh, That'd be ideal. Oh, yeah, shots of espresso straight into pulling <laughs> Oh, yeah, we, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah I'd, love to, I'd love to see more people in Strongman. I mean, yeah. you know, you can come out of it and literally say I pulled a truck today and everyone's just like, what? It's yeah. like some of my videos that get the best uh, looks at are deadlifting cars. You know, it's just it just it's different. Like, it's not yeah. even that it's it, you know they are uh, slightly tough to lift, but it was just uh, it just you're like oh, you're deadlifting a car. And I was like, yeah, pretty cool. It's just just really cool things like that, which you can you can do. Yeah, and most importantly, it makes for a great Facebook profile picture. <laughs> That's why we're here, man. I mean, <laughs> how many of your listeners have got the profile picture of them with a squat or a deadlift? I know oh, I'd say 98%. Probably the deadlift, isn't it? That, that's that, because you're just standing there looking all jacked, got the weight there. You can, exactly. You can sort of crop it in a bit so you can't see exactly how many weight bars. Yeah, fish eye lens as well makes it look like it's yes. bending more. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's about, yeah. But now, I just, I think people drinking great coffee um people wanting to know more about where their food whether supplements products have come from i think as consumers we we need to demand more of where we're getting things from so uh, the the, you know batch tested or you know where's my food come from you know just just things like that i think if people took just a little bit more interest um in that you know you you, you, you'd open you demand a better quality product from uh, the companies and then you know as what's happening with coffee and craft beer the big companies you know starbucks has now opened up a speciality lab i think they call a sensory lab or something in response to the growth of independent coffee shops so you know they listen they watch so it's up to us to sort of bring that thing kind of forward and then with your training demand more want to know more why am i doing five sets of five is it the best way uh, how do i get a better position uh, you know get a coach you know i've been very fortunate i've had some fantastic coaches with rugby with training with strongman train with people who are better than you learn from them um ask questions I, you know ask me like put me in facebook or just ask me questions anything to do with training every it's a great community where people want to share this this kind of stuff with everyone we want better lifters better coffee um better apparel better you know just better everything if we just keep 
asking questions from everything and wanting to know more. Like, look at the the whole evidence based movement, how much that's grown in the last few years. I mean, I think some guys go too far the other way now, and they're like, "Oh, well, it's not scientific." And it's like, "Come on, yeah." But just you know, want want to go more, like listen to these guys because the more you demand it, the more people will respond. The companies will respond to it. Exactly, exactly. I think that's a great place to end up. Um, thank you so much for jumping on the show. No, Where ahead, can you tell a bit more about yourself and Barbells and Beans. Fantastic, man. Uh, but for me, uh, if you can go on my Facebook is Barbells and Beans UK. Instagram is Barbells and Beans. Um, website barbellsandbeans.bigcartel.com. I think what we'll do is uh, I'll have a chat with you off air and see if we can get like a little discount code. So oh, sweet, sounds great. We'll get something sorted um, with the last post for Christmas. Is this is this going out before Christmas or is that? Yeah, it will do, or just about around Christmas. So it might be Boxing Day, something like that. Okay, well we'll see if we can get like a little discount code for your guys, and we'll get that sorted out. And um. Yeah, that, that's me. Uh, if you want to get hold of me, send me a message or any questions or just browse your power if you like something, pick it up. We'll be small, supporting a small business, so it's all really appreciated. But uh, thanks for today. No worries. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Alpha Movement Podcast. This episode was live streamed in my free Facebook group, Alpha Athletes Page 2.0, where you can get priority access to the guests. You can ask your questions via me to them and get them answered. You can stay up to date with the latest goings on in the Alpha Movement world, and you can access me, my ramblings, my posts, and all the fun stuff. Also, if you enjoy the show, you can head over to patreon.com slash alpha movement podcast and you can pledge however much you want per month um, just to keep the show on the road. It's a it's something that sucks up a lot of time. Well, I say sucks up. It's the absolute pleasure to do, but it sucks up time in some way. It sucks up um, my money and resource and I want to keep this going for as long as I can because I know how much you guys get from the show. So if you head over to uh, patreon.com, slash alpha movement podcast you can pledge as little or as much as you want every single month and you can cancel it whenever you'd like and it just helps to keep the show going other than that if you head over to itunes you can find us leave a five star review if you enjoyed the show and you can find us on social media this show relies on your support um, so you spread the word if you enjoy it reach out to whoever my guest was this week and myself say you enjoyed the show and i shall see you soon for another episode of the alpha movement podcast oh, 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 oh.